mentioned in the history books of Venice. Been trying to write a book for a while, but working full time and six grandchildren, it's really <laughs> impossible. But I hope to get it going um, because we need to know that history involves all of us. All of us here are important. And if you look around the room, you can see that our history is great. And our history is one that needs to be talked about and needs to be shared. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming. And thank you. And please understand that we're here to educate, not to put down, to call together as brothers and sisters of a community that is famous around the world. People come all around the world to Venice to see us, all of us, uh, and not just to look at mansions or mini mansions that are built from property line to property line. We are here because of the rich culture that's here, the artists, our beautiful people, the poets, beautiful people, uh, magicians, uh, chop artists, we're all, it's all one melting pot here in Venice and we're fighting to keep it. And please go to our website, savevenice.me, where we work on a multitude of issues that are going on in Venice. We fight the overdevelopment of, it, of Venice, the gentrification of Venice, which is not taking into our history that these be beautiful buildings that are here and that were built here were built for a purpose. Uh, when you see the houses <laughs> high off the ground, it's because Venice used to flood when I was a child. <laughs> Every street, not just Westminster and uh, Six or California and uh, Oakwood. Every street mm. would flood. Mm. So the houses were built up high for a purpose. Not just, and nobody asked the question, but I just thought I should share that that's why some of the older houses are built so high off the ground. But our history is not wanted nor needed by the new people that are coming into the community digging underground when water is right there. And then you see the pumps, the people LADWP out pumping the water out because it's gone into some of their buildings. But neither here nor there. Uh, Venice has a rich cultural history, especially for people of color. Oakwood section that they called Oakwood, and we fought that forever, 90291. Uh, my friend Jatan and I used to get up and say, uh, all of our zip codes are 90291, but then we got sectioned off into Oakwood. We'll, we'll accept that. There was a time when African American people could not cross California, could not cross Lincoln Boulevard, could not cross Rose Boulevard, nor what we call West Washington Boulevard that is now called Abbott King. So we built our own little community within those 10 blocks and we had our own stores and cobblers and barbecue and food and and Fox Theater, we had to get our parents to drive us across there to be let out to run in because we weren't supposed to go over there. But Fox Theater was our only entertainment that was in that 10 block radius that was in Venice. Uh, we took the bus, that's the bus route to, uh, that's been taken away now, it was the only way we could get to Venice High and Mark Twain. Now our kids have to walk, skateboard, or uh, get a ride to Mark Twain and Minnesota because there's no public transportation anymore to those three schools. So they're, they're uh, dwindling in students. So it's a lot of history, but we're gonna share a lot of it tonight and we're gonna do a Q and A if anyone would like to ask questions. Uh, but we're gonna start with our elder, Ms. Jatan Valentine. No, 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 I'm fine. She, she could have said the little elder. <laughs> and she would have been right. She would have been right. 
Uh, I'm Jatan Valentine, longtime Venice resident. Uh, my relatives are the Reese and the Tabers, and I'm hoping that the people were looking around and seeing these uh, pictures and things because uh, uh, most, like my family, they came from Louisiana and when starting down there at the beginning, it's showing where they were digging for the canals. So when my cousin Arthur Reese came, he went back and told his cousins that there's a lot of work there here in Venice. So they thought that they would come to the great state of California. Of course, uh, they heard rumors too the streets were paved with gold, but they found that wasn't true. In fact, most of the streets were, uh, they were dirt. But anyway, there was a lot of work and they came and they prospered and their main thing is that they wanted to uh, figure out a trade, take care of their family and uh, have a house and most and all of them did do that. In fact, uh, at these pictures like uh, Arthur Reese, uh, he started uh, working for Abbott Kenny and he found out, well gee, he's got a trade, he can decorate and uh, things and being, he came from Louisiana. They started like the Mardi Gras where he would do the Massetti paint uh, faces and things and then he did started doing the, every time they had something uh, going on, uh, he would do the decorating and then he did floats and uh, in fact, one of the floats won an award at the Rhodes Parade and as you know, it's hard to uh, even get an entry into uh, the Rhodes Parade and it's still a great parade. And then my uncle, uh, Urban Tabor, uh, he came uh, he, and uh, he happened to meet at Kenny on the, walking down the, by the beach, by the water, and he asked him if he could drive. And he said, oh yeah, I can drive. Well, actually he really couldn't, but he had a friend that, that taught him how to drive. <laughs> and he, he ended up being his chauffeur and a good friend. And uh, when they passed away, the house was left to him, which is at 610 Santa Clara down at the end. And uh, where the house is, where Abbott Kenny's house was, is where the new post office is now down. And uh, there was a covenant tree here in Venice where uh, blacks were supposed to well, have to live in just a certain area. So uh, he actually owned the house, but he really didn't own the land, so uh, he didn't have uh, not that the courts would help him, because remember, this is a black man. But anyway, he had a lot of uh, brothers, and my grandfather, and, and uh, they uh, cut the house in three, they moved it. They, remember, they were using mules, they made them uh, like a wagon-like, and they moved the house to where it is, stands now. Um, it is a historic monument, and uh, like I said, uh, my uh, Grandmother, Jenny Tabor, their sister, she was the last one to come here to uh, Venice. Uh, but then all her brothers and sisters are here, and then her uh, mother and father were here, so uh, she came. They lived on uh, Westminster, and uh, Urban Tabor, who was making a lot of good money then, uh, for those days, he bought these forts. And all of the relatives, as they came one by one, they stayed there. My mother was 11 years old when she stayed there. And I'm happy to say after about two years, and with the help of a lot of people here, including Laddie and everybody, uh, uh, a lot of the ones that are doing this tonight help in this historic monument because we're trying to keep the history here in Venice. My grandfather, I think, uh, being that was covered in, and uh, Laddie kind of, uh, Laddie did mention that the blacks were, you know, we have to be in a certain area. I think my grandfather decided since he had so many brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws that uh, he would move about four blocks where I live now on Vernon. So when he moved in, the people thought, and there's pictures of Ku Klux Klan's. Yes, they were here in, in Venice, L.A., El Segundo, Sotel, you name it. <coughs> and uh, where I live, they burned the cross on the lawn because mm -hmm. they thought it was a black man married to a white lady. So the people that couldn't take it, they moved. And the ones that uh, 
decided to see my decent people. So my grandfather, he was the fisherman back in Louisiana, but uh, he seen that uh, they were doing the canals and cement work and things. Uh, so he became a cement contractor. In fact, he was the first black cement contractor in Venice. And any black person or wanted to learn the trade, he learned them, and they made a really nice uh, living. And uh, like I said, uh, I've been here in Venice a long time, and I, I see the history here in Venice, and we want to save it because we have the First Baptist Church with his pictures of uh, Reverend Holmes and his wife and the congregation. And uh, it's, it meant something to the Venice people and the people of the congregation, and it's, uh, it should be uh, preserved. And uh, we start letting one church go, we've already had some. It'll be just like Domino, so we do need to save Venice. Uh, anything else, Lanny, that you would like to say? If, um, if people would like to ask questions of Jatan and about her family, uh, Reverend Reese and Arthur Reese and right here, she's open to... This was his father. Here he is. Uh, here's one of uh, the floats that he did. One of them. Mm. This is Arthur Reese here. This is Urban Taylor who I talked about was the chauffeur. This is some of the things that he did. Like I said, this was uh, a lot of work, uh, and there was work for him. Most of them all came. They all ended up uh, finding a trade, and uh, they became good. And like I said, I mentioned on my street, my grandma and grandfather, uh, they, uh, people uh, seen that they were decent, and they wanted them. Yes? Uh, I see a camera over there. Was Reverend Reese also a professional photographer? Arthur was. Arthur. 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 Reverend. 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 Uh, no, he wasn't uh, a really. Uh, his thing.